Learn about how we're combining the power of blockchain with the simplicity of SQL, this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Jason, a program manager on the Azure SQL security team. Jason, thanks for joining us. Hey, Anna. Happy to be here. Happy to have you here. And before we get started, could you kick us off by just telling us a little bit about what you do? Sure. So I'm a program manager on the Azure SQL security team. So that means my team is responsible for ensuring all of the security controls that you need to secure your SQL estate are there and easy to use. Awesome. And today we're going to be talking about a very cool and new technology that's in SQL now related to blockchain. But before we get into that, just because you know maybe not all of our viewers know about blockchain, can you tell us a little bit about blockchain and then also the challenges with blockchain that kind of led the team to invest in this tech? Absolutely. So blockchain is, you know, it's a nascent new technology. There's a lot of buzzwords going on around it, crypto, NFTs, etc. But enterprises specifically have been really excited about blockchain, primarily because of its immutability characteristics, where you can share data with other parties that you may not trust very well, um, and ensure that that data has not been tampered with, that it's truly immutable and uh, basically helps with things like non-repudiation. Awesome. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so I'm guessing we're kind of going towards something that's more software as a service or platform as a service, maybe even you could take advantage of your existing Azure SQL deployments. But can you just tell us now, you know, a little bit more about Azure SQL database ledger and what it actually is? <laughs> Absolutely. So as we just talked about, um, really blockchain has really just spurred the interest of enterprise specifically with that, that point of immutability. And one of the core scenarios that they've been seeing is the fact that today audits are really, really hard to do. Um, you have to have somebody come in manually from an auditing firm and, and inspect your security controls and make sure that everything is set up such that your data is safe. You can use a technology like blockchain that enables digital trust where you can cryptographically prove to an auditor that data has not been tampered with is just super, super interesting. So a lot of companies have flocked to blockchain to help solve that problem. Okay. Now, one of the challenges though is that, you know, fundamentally, um, systems that are centralized. So think of existing database systems today where you want to digitize that trust. Moving over to a blockchain is really not only hard to do, but it also um, is a lot of infrastructure. Blockchain is what's called multi-party computing. That means that every party that's going to participate in the blockchain network has to host infrastructure, a node, if you will, to have a copy of that blockchain ledger. And so it requires you to build a net new system. So we've had customers over the years ask us during the, you know, the blockchain journey we've gone on, hey, how do I enable this kind of scenario for, uh, for my databases? And it's a really good question because we really haven't had an answer until now. <laughs> so Azure SQL Database Ledger is uh, really about bringing the power of blockchain into SQL Database. And effectively what we're doing, Anna, is we're making the data in SQL tamper evident using cryptography. And when I say cryptography, it's the same blockchain type patterns that you would see in blockchain today. And I'll talk about that. Now, in addition to that, we provide a way for external parties that don't have that don't host that database to be able to have a cryptographic proof that the data has not been tampered with in that database they're interfacing with that another party might be hosting. So that's really, really powerful. And probably the most important part is the fact that this is a feature of Azure SQL Database. It's, it's not a new version of SQL or a new PaaS service. It's effectively something you'll be able to turn on for your existing databases and then have that level of tamper evidence um, available for your applications. So why don't we dive in real quick and talk about really what we're doing here. So there's two types of functionality that we're enabling in Azure SQL database. Um, we call them ledger tables, and it's not a new table type. It's a new property of tables that, that already exists. So your existing tables um, effectively can be ledger tables. And we have two types, and we'll talk about updatable ledger tables first, because this is typically the pattern that we see with Azure SQL database applications today. So let's assume that I'm doing an update to my database. What happens with an updatable ledger table is that when I send an update, let's say I'm going to change a particular column value in a row, that previous row version is actually moved over to a history table. 
Now, those of you that are familiar with SQL are saying, well, that sounds like temporal to me. And it's very similar to temporal, or I should say it's actually built upon temporal. Uh, but there's some differences that will, will come in here that you'll see in a second. Now, in addition of moving that historical row into this history table, we also add some metadata to the table itself to help with forensics and data lineage purposes. So for example, every transaction that comes in is um, assigned a, a unique transaction ID. So you know uh, which transaction actually initiated the changes in the database. We also capture commit time and other information that's useful for that uh, forensic purposes. Now, we also construct what's called a ledger view. And the ledger view gives you a chronicle of your data over time. So it shows you, hey, this is what the current value of your row is, but hey, here's what the historical value is. So rather than having to query the updatable ledger table and the history table separately, we construct that view to make it easier. Now, we've just talked about kind of the data lineage piece and capturing history. We haven't talked about really the blockchain element here. So data is protected in what we call the database ledger. So think of this as a blockchain data structure that's implemented in system tables in SQL. Effectively, what happens is every transaction coming into the system is also hashed using SHA-256 hashing. So this is very similar to what you'll see in a blockchain. Every row in a transaction is hashed and using a Merkle tree data structure that creates a root hash. Um, and then we batch all of those transactions into blocks. So what that means is um, every 30 seconds or so, a new block is created that will consist of all of the transactions that have occurred during that time. And that block is cryptographically hashed as well and linked to the previous blocks, just like a blockchain. Now, at that point, once a block is produced, that root hash representing that block is then pushed outside of SQL and we push it into a trusted storage location. So a trusted storage location could be Azure Immutable Blobs or another service we re announced recently called Azure Confidential Ledger, which is a uh, tamper-proof storage service. Or you could store it in your own tamper-proof storage service if you want, such as an on-premises worm device. So this is where it's interesting for other parties, auditors or other business parties that want to verify that your data has not been tampered with. They can run a stored procedure that effectively references that database digest and trusted storage. We then recalculate the hashes real time inside a SQL and either the hashes match or they don't match what was in the digest. And if they don't match, we know that a tampering event has occurred. So it's pretty easy to figure out. Uh, whether there's been tampering or not. And in most cases, there isn't tampering. So providing that cryptographic proof that tampering hasn't occurred is really powerful. Now, we also have append-only ledger tables, which are very similar. The primary difference to updatable ledger tables is we block updates and deletes at the API layer. That means that a privileged user such as a DBA can't issue an update or a delete inside of uh, Azure Data Studio, as an example, and modify data as well. So both patterns are available. So why don't we go ahead and jump into a demo here? All right, so what I'm gonna show you is I'm connected to a database that um, I've already created a table in. And the table that I've created, think of it as a simple bank of scheming uh, scenario where I have a customer and their bank balance, right? Um, what you'll see here is when I created this, uh, this T-SQL statement to create this schema, uh, that I specified the ledger equals on argument. It's a new argument that makes that table a updatable ledger table, okay? Now, once I've created that table, you'll see that actually what's been created are three objects, the account balance table itself, but then also that history table that I talked about earlier and that ledger view that I, that I told you about earlier. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna show you in addition to how you create these tables inside of T-SQL, you can also enable the ledger functionality when you create a SQL database inside of the Azure portal. So when I'm creating a new database, effectively what uh, happens here, you'll see that in the create database experience, there's a new tab called the security tab. And underneath there's an area called ledger. Now it's not configured by default because there are some implicit decisions I have to make specifically around that digest storage. Where do I wanna store those digests? So if I click on configure ledger, you'll see that I have a couple of options here. The first is I can have a, the ability to enable ledger functionality for this entire database. What that means is if I check this box, every table that I create in the future, whether I specify ledger equals on or not in my T-SQL will automatically be an updatable ledger table. So this ensures that nobody can create tables in that database that are not ledger tracked. Now you don't have to do that. I could unclick that and I could still do it through T-SQL, but we're gonna just do that here now. Now, 
down below is the digest storage options. So you have the option to automatically connect to Azure Storage, or as you can see here, Azure Confidential Ledger, which I mentioned is a new service that provides tamper-proof storage. Uh, now, during the life cycle of this table, I can't turn Ledger off once I already have it on. That's, that's a security constraint. We want to make sure that once a tab table is Ledger enabled, it always will be. Uh, but I can change my digest locations over time. I could start with Azure Confidential Ledger, but maybe later down the road, I want to switch to Azure Storage. So that's supported. Now, once I've created that database, um, you can go to the manage experience and under security, there's a ledger option here and you'll see effectively the same experience. Now, one of the core differences here is the fact that um, this checkbox I cannot uncheck. Once I've enabled that ledger functionality, again, it's, it's there for good for security reasons. And again, I could change that storage location over time. Now, I talked about earlier how to verify the database and, and what actually is happening there. So we've built into the Azure portal a way to easily do that. If I click on the Verify Database command at the toolbar here, we pre-populate a T-SQL script that will run the verification process. So I can copy this script. I can run it in Query Editor. But let's go into Azure Data Studio and run it here. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this script in. And we're going to go ahead and run it. So what we're effectively doing here is we're calling or pulling the locations where our digests have been stored because I have a multiple locations and we're running the verification process. And what we'll see here is the results will provide really uh, two results inside of the, uh, uh, the window here, the, the success of the ledger verification itself, but also the uh, locations where the digests are stored. So let's look at the digest location uh, storage first. And this is important to inspect because theoretically an attacker could point you to a different storage location with Forge Digest. So it's really important you protect those digests because they are the root of trust for the database. So as you can see here, I've had two locations that are configured over time. Uh, this one is I'm currently uh, using Azure Storage Blobs um, and uh, this true indicates that's the current location. This one here, Azure Confidential Ledger, is where I previously had configured, which is why it says false. So as you can see, running verification is really quick. Um, if I go into the messages window here, you can see that ledger verification ran successfully and it tells you up to which block it referred to um, inside of that verification process. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. What, you know, what I really like about this is how you're natively building this experience into the Azure SQL experience. So in the portal during deployment, you have these different blades. After deployment in the portal, you have you know, a whole ledger tab uh, where you can configure these things and learn what the T-SQL is. And I also really like that you're using T-SQL throughout. So now I don't have to go learn a new tool or new, learn a new language. Once I understand the concepts, I can go ahead and start taking advantage of this. Um, so this is really cool, really promising. I think a lot of people are gonna be excited about this. Um, as we come back to scenarios overall, like we've looked at the tech, what are some scenarios you see customers using this for or that you think this can be used for? Well, that's a great question because it's really uh, multifaceted. Number one, we see Ledger as a fundamental security technology, meaning um, any data, any production data that you have in your SQL database that you rely on for your business, you really should protect. And even if that's protecting from your own internal uh, DBAs and, and folks inside of your uh, organization. Um, so protecting that data is important. But in addition to that, as I alluded to earlier, streamlining the audit process, uh, whether external or, or internal audits, is really super important, being able to provide that cryptographic proof that data has not been tampered with. So that's one of the core ones. Now, in addition to that, this, the, this next one, multi-party business processes, uh, this is an example where we've seen uh, over the years customers that have initially gone to blockchain or tried to go to blockchain to solve a data sharing integrity problem. Um, but found that blockchain is just uh, it's a lot a lot to do. And, and really what they needed is that digital trust and they really have fundamentally a centralized system. So we've seen customers that actually have started down the path of blockchain and, and it's been hard and then instead pivot over to something simpler uh, using Azure SQL Database Ledger to solve that multi-party business process. And then lastly, um, SQL, Azure SQL Database Ledger is a great addition to an existing blockchain. And, and the reason being is that blockchains um, are notoriously challenging to be able to query the data on the blockchain itself. It's not a um, OLTP type system. Um, so the blockchain itself is really wants to spend its time validating blocks and, and committing data to the ledger. It's not optimized for high throughput query. So a typical pattern that we've seen with blockchains is that 
customers will take the data that's on the chain itself and then replicate it to what's called off-chain, copying it to a database. And then they do Power BI and analytics on that database itself. But once you do that, you lose the integrity that a blockchain affords because it's now in a database. Well, with Azure SQL Database Ledger connected to a blockchain, you keep that integrity from the blockchain to the off-chain store itself. So it's very powerful for existing blockchains as well. I see. Very cool. Um, thanks so much, Jason. This has been really insightful. You know, final final question I have for you today is kind of to ask about some resources that you might have that we can put in the description, and then uh, also kind of any advice for folks who are just getting started with this. No, absolutely. So uh, as far as getting started with it, um, really the, the resources are the key piece. So number one, um, we had an announced blog and, and that's, a, that's a good place to visit because it showcases some of our customers that are using the service and how they're using it. Um, and then of course, our documentation um, is, is very good. We've made sure to add some very easy tutorials. In fact, the example that I just gave of the banking scheme is one of our tutorials to go through and just to learn the relationship between the the updatable ledger table, the view and the history table, et cetera. Now, for those of you that want to go a bit deeper and understand the cryptography a bit more, we have a great white paper that's been produced and is uh, available that goes into the depths of the system itself and how that cryptography works. Uh, of course, if you want to watch uh, the build keynote that we had, that's available for streaming. And then lastly, um, I'd really like to uh, highlight what Avanade is one of Microsoft's close partners has done um, in terms of building a set of resources and sample applications that are using Azure SQL Database Ledger to kind of give a practical example of how you could use it uh, for pr uh, protecting healthcare records in that particular case. Awesome, great. Well, again, Jason, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, to our viewers, we'll put links to all of those, we'll put links to all of that in the description of this video, so check it out. Go read more about this. The white paper is super interesting. Uh, Jason, I want to thank you again so much for coming on the show. And to our viewers of Data Exposed, please like this video, leave us a comment, and let us know what you think of Azure SQL Database Ledger. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.